morning, we're in James chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. James chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. We want to talk for a few moments this morning on having a proper perspective in the midst of trials. A proper perspective. James says this, reading from the CSB. He says, believers in humble circumstances are to take pride in their high position. But the rich should take pride in their humiliation since they will pass away like a wildflower. For the sun rises in scorches and scorching heat withers the plants. Its blossoms falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. Man, what does it mean to have a proper perspective? Amen. You may be seated. Listen, in the movie Trading Places, now there are a few of us that can remember the movie Trading Places. About half of you weren't even born then. But in the movie Trading Places, uh, starring Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd, uh, the film tells the story of a uh, middle-class commodities dealer, broker name, uh, uh, who, who is played by Dan Aykroyd, and then uh, of this poor street hustler, Valentine, played by the up-and-coming star Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy, whose lives cross by an unwittingly bet made by these two older gentlemen. Each man uh, would, 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 would have their life circumstances swapped. It would be a rag to riches, a riches to rag story. It would be a story of trials and smiles, smiles and trials, witnessing how quickly one's life station can change one's perspective itself. itself. Now, we know it's Hollywood. We know it's Hollywood. But Hollywood sometimes can teach us lessons that both the rich and poor will endure challenges. And that, here it is, and that in an instant, our lives can be turned inside out. That, 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 that without notice, without notice, we can find ourselves, amen, going from on top of the mountain to the bottom valley below. And, 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 the, and the deal is, the deal is, the deal is, if, if you and I don't have the proper perspective, we can miss what God is doing. If you're like me, you, you, you've had seasons in life where you look through the lens of life and you saw something totally wrong that, 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 that skewed your view, that, 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 that shaped you to give you an improper perspective. You know, just as a small illustration, you know, sometimes I take my glasses off and I put my daughter glasses on. It's a little joke I play. I, and, 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 here, and, and though we both have... Uh, prescription glasses, what I've noticed, amen, is that, is that I wear my glasses because I can't see what's close to me. She wore her glasses because she can't see what's further away, amen. And, and, and with her glasses, amen, I might say, listen, something's wrong with the paper. Something wrong with the TV. But when I put my glasses back on, everything seems to be just right. See, that's perspective. It, it, it's all about the lens through which you look through the perspectives of your life that you can see clearly or unclearly. Maybe you felt like you were passed over for a promotion on the job. Somebody with less talent, less gifts, didn't dress as good as you, didn't look as good as you, didn't, didn't have the same pedigree as you, yet they got the promotion. Maybe you wasn't selected for the team when you was a kid in the playground. Some of us still carry our playground wounds with us today. <laughs> Right, right, right. Maybe the coach overlooked you, and he 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 picked somebody that 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 that, that couldn't that, that 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 couldn't shoot at all. Amen. You you could get on the ball, they couldn't even throw it into an open pool, but yet they yet they on the court. Maybe you got looked over for an event that you helped plan, and they acknowledged everybody. You know how you help people get their weddings together, and they acknowledge everybody, or 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 or, 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 or you help pay for a funeral. Yeah, yeah, and, and they thank everybody, and you thinking, you know, hey, you know, if I didn't get y'all them Benjamins, uh, uh, we still he still be on ice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, proper perspective. Yeah, yeah, maybe a would-be friend didn't share your friendliness in a relationship. We've all had that happen. Mm -hmm. Maybe you saved and saved and saved and saved, and one incident. One uninsured motorist ran into your car and wiped out your savings. Yeah. And, and rather, than, rather than celebrate that God spared your life, you hoping to see them in court so you can fight them. Proper perspective. 
Remember, I mentioned that we view situations and how we view them can be improper because often we look at people as the reason for our good or our bad fortunes. So uh, we can all fall prey to believing that our good or bad sometimes is human error when really God is the curator of everything that happens in our lives. Could our perspective really be that God is using what Paul calls these light and momentary afflictions or trials for a far weighter glory. In other words, God sometimes will take you through what you're going through because God is trying to get something greater out of you. Uh, uh, Oh, Lord, when am I going to come out of this here? You ain't build up enough muscle to come out of what God has you in right now. You, you, you don't have enough fortitude yet for God. Your, your character still needs to be shaped. It was in my broke days that God helped me the best. In my broke days, I learned how to pray. In my broke days, I learned how to fast. In my broke days, I learned how to depend on God from day to day, amen. Oh, 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 see, see, your broke days had benefits in your life. And we're going to see that because we're going to look at two perspectives. We're going to look at uh, 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 the poor man's perspective and the rich man's perspective. But many of us, if we're honest, amen, we were better Christians when we were broke. Why? Because we needed God. You know, the trick with wealth is we think we've made it. We say, I want to look back and see how far I got over. But the truth be told, most of us don't want to look back. We don't want to look back. We don't want to look back. We don't want to look back. Matthew 5 helps us because Matthew tells us these words. Matthew 5, 45, he tells us, he says that uh, so that you may know you are the children of your father, for he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. In other words, God says, I deal with folk the way I choose to deal with them. He says, he says, he says, he says, this, I make the sun shine on both evil and good. I make rain fall on, on, on the righteous and the unrighteous. Yeah, yeah. The reality is that God has the right perspective on each of our lives, whether we are up or down, rich or poor. God is using those circumstances and situations to draw our attention from our test trials and, 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 and situations to the singleness of his throne. In other words... The reason we go through what we go through, as James talks about, is so that we can keep our focus on God. See, our text this morning is one of what you call a biblical paradox. We see this in scriptures, this biblical paradox, which we'll jump in a little bit later. But James is speaking to Christians. We know that because uh, because early in James 1, he tells us that he's writing to the 12 tribes who have been dispersed about abroad or about the earth. And then he says that uh, uh, while he's writing to them, he says that we ought to consider it great joy. So James is not changing gears here when he begins to talk about the rich and poor. He's just going to give us a different perspective on why God allows things things to be as they are. God is working on producing something. James is challenging the false notion that we can escape life's ups and downs based on our status. Uh, Some of us feel like when we get the black card, we didn't came up, amen. Uh, But it ain't nothing like having your black card rejected at Macy's. Uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. God, 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 God is letting us know. It ain't nothing like being maxed out and can't pay the bill. Uh, uh, listen, 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 listen. I used to have so many bills in the mailbox that, that listen, the mailman started bringing the bills to the house. You know, we had one of the boxes at our apartment. I wouldn't go get the mail. Mailman said, hold up, you're making my job hard, Mr. Lee. Knocked on the door one day and said, this is yours. <laughs> Amen. He says, I cleaned it out for you. I took them. I said, listen, make no sense to open them. I ain't got no money. I just walked on over to the trash can and dumped them all. Amen. And say, the Lord be with you. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. See, there's this misconception. It's this misconception in our consumer-driven culture. The misconception is that money equals security and happiness. How many, how many folk with money has taken their own lives? And, and if truth be told, a lot of folk got money and miserable. They can't even enjoy it. I tell my kids all the time, uh, 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 oh, y'all always going somewhere. Y'all always doing something. I say, I'm trying to enjoy all this money while I can. Amen. Now, now if y'all act right, I'll let y'all enjoy some of it with me. The misconception is that money is, the other misconception is that money is evil. That is evil. Therefore, we should embrace struggle and poverty. But the book of wisdom, Proverbs, sheds light that can help us before we jump into our text. Look what he says in Proverbs 37 through 9. If you've got your device uh, or, or, your, or, or your deal, look what he says, right? He says, uh, <clears throat> two things I asked of the Lord. Do not refuse me before I die. 
keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, who is the Lord? He says, he says, he says, Lord, if you give me too much, amen, I, I, I may not be ready for it, amen, and I, and, and I, and I, may, I may be like they were in Deuteronomy, say, my hand and my, and, and my might has gotten me this well, and forget who God is. He says, but on the other hand, if I become too poor and still, and so dishonor the name of God, he says, the lesson here is to keep me focused on Jesus no matter what I have or what I don't have. One study has found that unlike our grandparents, we live in bigger houses, we drive better cars, we wear more expensive clothes, we eat at priceless re restaurants, we take more vacations, we have timeshares and well-funded retirement plans, and yet we're more tired, unhappy, overly, overly medicated, insulated and isolated, and in a state of constant conflict. Why was it that my grandfather, who was a sharecropper, was happier than I am sitting in my big house? Perspective. 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 I want to go out on a limb and say it's because we miss what James has already taught us in the scripture. James opens up in this chapter. He says, count it all joy. Count it all joy. Not when, you're, not, not when your loan got approved. Amen. He says, no, 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 no. Count it all joy. Not when uh, you, you drop three dress sizes. No, you got to count it joy when they tell you you're denied and you count it, count, it, count it joy when you can't fit into the dress. He says, count it all joy when? He says, when you go through various trials or many trials. He says, you've got to learn, amen, how to be the same person with God on top of the mountain as you are in the valley. He then tells us that we ought to embrace our discomfort and trials because God is working something out in us. He tells us then not only to count it joy, he says then seek wisdom on how you might go through what you're going through. He tells us, he says, he says to make, to make pleasing God our chief aim in life and to find peace in eternal things rather than living in temporal circumstances. That's what James has laid out so far in our text. As you look at verses 1 through 8, he's, he's laid those things out. And so, and then he comes now to what I call these two biblical paradox. A paradox is an outlandish statement that contradicts human reason. In fact, the paradox is like when somebody says something is true on both ends, but it makes no sense when you hear it. Let me give you some examples in the Bible. Uh, in Matthew 23, 11, it says, whoever wants to be greatest should be everyone's servant. Now, we say that don't make no sense because if, I, because if I'm the greatest, y'all ought to be serving me. Hmm? Or, 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 or anyone who wants to be first must become last. Yeah, yeah. See, see, that's a paradox. I can't be, I can't be first and be last. See, 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 Jesus messes with our mind. Or, or, or he says something like this. Whoever tries to keep their lives will lose it. And whoever loses their life will keep it. Man, what do you want? Do you want me to keep it or you want me to give it away? Paradox. Or when Paul says when we are weak, we're actually strong. That's a paradox. In our, own, in our own reading in chapter 1, when he says, count it all joy when you go through various trials. In other words, you want me to sing while I'm suffering. See, see here's, here's what we struggle with. We struggle with the truth that something can be, two things can be true at the same time. Mm -hmm. It can be true. So you can be, watch this here, watch this here. Stick with me, stick with me, tune in. You can be, watch this here, you can be pretty ugly. You can be pretty on the outside, but ugly every time you open your mouth. True at the same time. Hmm? Or you can be ugly pretty. I will not elaborate. You figure it out. <laughs> James, in these few verses this morning, will use each tool to focus our attention. Don't look at your neighbor. Don't look at your neighbor. Don't do that. Right? In the, uh, on the truth in the midst of trials, keep in mind, a paradox, though seemingly outlandish, offers us boldness of a biblical truth. And so here's our first paradox. It is the perspective of poverty. Look at verse 9, James 1, 9. Believers in humble, humble circumstances ought to take pride in their position. Here's what he's saying. He's saying broke believers should take pride in their position. Why is he saying that? Look at the paradox in the text. He said the poor has been given 
has been given the kingdom, although they don't have what they need here. The idea is that the humble circumstances points not to the spiritual condition of the believer, but to the financial condition of the believer. It is illuminating for us that a believer who has little or is lacking or without, while they may seem to be in a low place, such as a beggar or a borrower, the Bible says they're in a high position in God. Here, James again, reminds us that everyone who goes through, goes through tests and trial, both rich and poor, because he's later going to talk about how, how wealthy people should be. That's, that would be you and I. However, the reward for the poor may not come in this temporal journey. On earth, we call, we call life. In fact, James and Jesus made the comment that the poor would be with us always. And this here, watch this here, watch this here. If that's true, that, that rips to shred the prosperity gospel. Because the prosperity gospel says everybody's healthy. The prosperity gospel is, ooh, is, is, is Oprah. You get a car. You get a house. You get a, you get a man. You, you get, you get, you get. No, no. Jesus says, listen, the poor, he said, there's going to always be some broke folk around you. And not only are they going to be broke, they're going to love Jesus. See, but by the same token, by the same token, right, God, God also reminds us that, that, that because the poor is going to be with us always doesn't mean one is living in unrepentant sin. See, that's the classic Pentecostal view. The classic Pentecostal view say the reason you're going through what you're going through is because you need to repent. Sometimes you're living your best life for Jesus and you're still going through. Mm-hmm. Why? Because God is trying to work something in and out of you, right? See, let, 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 let me help you out. We support pastors and ministries in three places in the world where people uh, essentially live on an economic system called hand-to-mouth. Now, most of us don't know what hand-to-mouth is. Here's what hand-to-mouth is. This means that each day they live out the Lord's Prayer, that section where it says, give us today our daily bread or our subsistence for the day. That means that when they go to work, Amen. Like in Uganda, they're trying to make two dollars today. Those two dollars is going to buy enough rice or flour or, or, or kush kush, whatever it is, to feed my family just today. Hand to mouth. You're going to the exchange is whatever I get in my hands today is going to allow me to buy a fish and just enough for me and my family to eat today. And we're going to we're going to live hand to mouth. Here's the amazing thing. They live in houses without running water, no AC unit, no electric stove, no gas, amen. They have no leftovers from a night out at a fancy restaurant, and yet they're satisfied with God and has, that, that he has saved and set them apart. I'll never forget when we, we, we planted a church in Reynosa, Mexico, and when we planted that church, we were guided up a hill by, by the drug cartel to the place where the church was, and the church had no AC. They didn't even have windows. They just had, a, they just had some bricks that they had built up, and you could look up and see the sky, but when they sunk unto God, when they prayed unto God, when it was time to eat, man, 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 they had pulled their money together and they, they brought us some beans and rice and some coke, amen, and, 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 and they were so proud of what they, what they did. Why? Because here was saints in humble circumstances, and listen, their temporal situation did not mess with their eternal reality. Now, let me be clear. I'm not advocating poverty. Or saying that we should give up our comforts because God has blessed us. I'm saying, let's make sure that Jesus is our greatest treasure in life. Because mm -hmm. you can go to sleep tonight, living well, and wake up tomorrow and lose everything. The paradox is simply this. The poor, the, though poor believer has little by worldly standards, they have gained everything by heavenly standards. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love it. Beloved, Jesus has to be enough. If I don't get the promotion, if I don't get the house, if I never get the black card status, is Jesus enough? See, see, and the Bible says for this brother of, 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 of meager means, this sister of meager means, that they have crossed over to a place of great maturity that Jesus is enough. 
I've seen people lose everything and lose their mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, I did 23 years in the Army. And uh, we used to call a group of women card queens. Card queens. Y'all looking at me strange. <laughs> a card queen is somebody that marries a soldier to get an ID card. Because with the ID card, you get benefits. Now, here's how you know, here's how you know it's about the card. That when, when Bubba got out the Army or out the Air Force, card queen says, I got to switch up. Divorce time. I got to go find somebody else that can keep this card ministry going. <laughs> card queen. But some of us treat God like that. As long as he's raining down blessings. Yeah. We blessed and highly favored. Yeah. Huh? I can tell how your, how your check was just by how you come to church. Huh? When that money good, you like Mary Tyler Moore. You skipping in the rain. When your money out, you come down here with your head down looking at the ground. Like your shoes untied or something. You went from blessed and highly favored to how you doing? All right. I'm just going to make it by. He says, no, 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 don't be like that. He says that when you find yourself, be like this brother who has, who has Paul says that, that whether abound or abase, in whatever situation, I've learned to be content because I have God. I, I learned to be content. Now, 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 contentment and complacency is not the same deal. You can be content, but don't ever be complacent. Amen. Let me move on. Let me move on. I, I, I promise I wasn't going to keep you all alone. Here's the second perspective. So that's the perspective of poverty. Here's the perspective of wealth. Look at verses 10, 11. Look what he says here. He says, but the rich should take pride in their humiliation since they will pass away like a wild flower. Now, in this text, the wild flower, if you've ever been like to Arizona and you drove across the desert at the right time, you'll notice there are desert flowers, and when they bloom, they are beautiful. I mean, they, they make the desert floor look gorgeous. But here's the deal. The sun comes up later, and it kills it immediately. They're just there for a temporary time. See, say for the sun rises with the scorching heat and withers the plant. It, 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 it blossoms, falls, and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. Let's look at, let's look at the paradox, right? He says, he says, the rich have been brought low. Keep in mind, Jesus is writing to a church uh, uh, like us, where there's both rich and poor people in the congregation, where they worship together. So, 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 so James highlights whether rich or poor, God has a way of humbling us. Here, here he says to those with means, which would have been chariots, cash, and cribs, don't become puffed up in pride. So when he says the rich should be brought to humiliation, he says, listen, don't let your money make you act funny. Mm -hmm. Don't let your check make you disrespect folk. Amen. And some folk I'll never go out and eat with because they don't know how to treat folk. Right? Don't be talking crazy to the waiter or the waitress because they go into the kitchen and say, yeah, table six. They get the special wonton soup. Uh -uh. Look what he says. He says, he says, he says, he says, he says, he, he reminds them, don't be puffed up with pride because whatever you have in this life is just temporary. Some of us going to lose it before we even get to the grave. For those who have much in this world, James points out there is far greater wealth in Christ. Again, let me be clear in my statement. If God has blessed you with fortune and success, that is a blessing as long as you hold on to it loosely and lightly. Hold on to Jesus tightly, but hold on to everything in the world lightly. Another way of saying what James is highlighting is that is, just, is that the wealthy believer is, is, is to thank God for all his blessings, but to keep in mind that without the Savior, amen, he is spiritually bankrupt. Some people are the Scrooge year-round. They can't enjoy the blessings of God, and they don't want nobody else to enjoy. So God uses trials of the rich uh, uh, to remind them and to remind us, 
It's like being a wildflower, right? It's here today, gone tomorrow. I've noticed that many rich people are concerned with losing all they have. When James is explaining to lose all earthly wealth is a tremendous trial, yet to gain all of heaven is great victory. You know what another paradox is? Everybody want to go to heaven, nobody want to die. Hmm? Everybody want to go to heaven, nobody want to die. I got unsaved relatives. They say pray for them all the way up to the last breath. Mm -mm. That's a paradox. Give me more of you, Jesus. Jesus said, come on up. Hold up. Not right now, God. Huh? Not right now. Not right now. I'm not, I'm not quite ready. Listen, listen. We kick and scream on our way to heaven. We kick and scream. Listen. These verses are a reminder that we all struggle in this life and that God is faithful in every test to bring us through. In times of trial, our focus must remain eternal and not temporal. Sometimes God has to bring us low, catch this, y'all, to bring us up. Sometimes, listen, sometimes God has to move you from the Bentley to the bucket to get your attention. Oh, oh God, sometimes God has to humble you, amen. He has to take you from Macy's to Goodwill to remind you that he's God. That's what it means when he says that, that the wealthy may be brought into humiliation. Sometimes God has to break you to get your attention. Listen, listen, listen. Here's one of the most embarrassing things that can happen to you, especially if you go to Walmart. You swipe your card, and the machine talk back to you, say no can do. <laughs> that ain't going to work right here, bro. Huh? Machine be talking back to you. So, so, so you know, so, you know I, I get a little allowance. And so I, before, I, before I get to the checkout line, I go on the phone and check my account because I'm not going to be embarrassed, <laughs> right? And you, and you know how we play it off. You know how we play it off. When the car don't work, hey, man, we say, man, something must be wrong with the machine. Give me that piece of plastic over there. You know you ain't got no money. <laughs> God has to break us sometimes to bring us up. Let me just say this to us. You know who the richest people in the world are? Do you know? You. 80% of the world live on less than $3 a day. He's talking to us. Yeah, yeah, he's talking to us. With our lattes. Hmm. Mm -hmm. He's talking to us. Yeah, he's saying, listen, 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 I, I, I got you. I got you. All our screaming services. Hmm. Mm-hmm. He's talking to us. Mm-hmm. Some of us are Amazon kings and queens. Right? DoorDash demons. He's talking to us. He's talking to us. We, 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 we didn't got so lazy. And we got so much that we don't even shout. We call it in and pick it up. And then we so we 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 so foul with it, we just pop the trunk, put it in the trunk. We don't even check to see is it right. He's talking to us. He says, he says, he says, he says, you know what? Sometimes I got to trade places with y'all. If you can't get yourself right, I'll trade places. I'll, I'll, I'll put you in a place where the brother who has very few means, and I'll put him in this place because he's learned to appreciate me with nothing. He can handle me when he has something. Listen, listen, listen. But if we keep the truths of the scriptures front and center in our lives, we can serve God no matter what may come our way. Why does God allow both the poor and the rich to have such trials? I believe so that we can be reminded of our deep need to trust him. If we do nothing else in challenging times, we must have a proper perspective on life. Matthew 6 helps us. Let the Bible explain the Bible is what I've been taught. And so in Matthew 6, starting around verse 25 to verse 30, 34, look what he says. He says, therefore, I tell you, don't worry about your life. Don't worry about what you should eat or drink or about your body or what you should wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Hmm. Listen, I learned this from my uncles. If you keep your clothes long enough, they'll come back in style. You just got to stay small enough to fit in them. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Huh? My kids be on me, Dad, that's out of style. Just hold on. Keep living. Keep living. I'm going to be classic in a minute. 
they'll be like, man, shoot, you sharp, boy. What? See, and listen, and listen, and my daughters, listen, when they got, they start going to the thrift store looking for classic stuff. I like, I got a whole closet full of classic. <laughs> he says, don't worry about what you should eat, what you should drink about your body, what you should wear. Isn't life more than food or the body? Consider this, the birds of the sky. They don't sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth, worth more than they? Can any of you add one moment to his lifespan by worrying? No, you can't. And why do you worry about clothes? Observe the wildflowers of the field. They don't labor or spin thread. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was adorned like one of these. If, if that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more for you? Oh, you a little faith. Listen, are you trusting God or are you trusting your finances? I went to a church in South Texas. And you know what I loved about this church? When you got ready to go into the sanctuary down the hall, they had a board. And on that board, they had all the members. And next to each member name, they had what they gave. I said, oh, my God. I mean, Minister Davis driving. I said, D, we need a sign like that. Huh? Look, they had a row for tithers. For generous givers. And then if you didn't give nothing, they had a big old zero by your name. I was like, oh, my God. I say, man, look here. And, and, and listen, it got better. I was sitting down. I found a bulletin. They put your giving in the bulletin. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Yet I tell you. So don't look what he says. So don't worry, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? For the Gentiles eagerly seek after those things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow has enough worries for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. In other words, God said, I'm just trying to get you through what I'm trying to get you through Why I'm getting you through it. That's it. Let me give you five perspectives that you and I need to have as we go home. Five perspectives. Five biblical perspectives we can hold on to, whether rich or poor. Here are five biblical perspectives. Biblical perspective number one is God owns everything. We're just managers. The Bible says in uh, Psalms 24 and 1 that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. They that dwell in it say that God owns everything. Uh, um, I may have shared this with you, but I'll share it with you again because it's so important. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. <clears throat> My mentor, Bob Tile, said this here at his retirement, and, and, and I just can't shake it. I've been trying to shake it. I can't shake it. He says, <clears throat> he says, he says, we are like spare chains in God's pocket, and he can spend us however he wants to. Let me say that again, because I see some people looking at me. They ain't got frowns in their foreheads. You are like spare chains in God's pocket, and he can spend you however he wants to. So perspective one, God owns everything. Perspective number two, wealth can be deceitful and lead us astray without a proper biblical worldview. That's what Timothy talks about. He says, he says we brought nothing into this world and we can take nothing out of it. First Timothy uh, 6 and 7 says, you brought nothing into this world and you can take nothing out of it. Job said, naked I entered this world and naked I must leave. Amen. You brought nothing into the world and you can take nothing out of this world. I love that, amen. In other words, listen, so, so guess what? If somebody scratch your car in the parking lot, don't be out there acting a the fool all crazy, right? Getting your Instagram uh, likes up. Man, listen, you ain't taking that with you. You ain't taking that with you, right? You, listen, <clears throat> Sister Dale, if I eat the last piece of dessert, don't act crazy. You can't take that with you. Huh? Yeah. Listen. Thank God that I'm helping you learn how to, how to share and be humble. See, 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 it's about perspective. It's about perspective. We like perspective. Here, let me give you the third one. Let me give you the third one. Only Jesus can bring us joy. John 15, 11 says, I've told you these things that your joy may be, that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. Listen, I don't care how much money you have, money can never bring you joy. It bring you joy. It just it just doesn't. I I, I, I say this because I, I really mean this. Listen, listen. I was happier sometime in my broke days. Let me tell you why. I had no stress. I ain't have no money. 
right? I ain't have no place to stay for real. Man, listen, listen. It, man, it, it was just easy. You couldn't upset me. Listen, I was already on the bottom. But as soon as I rose, my angel will say, as I rise, soon as I, soon as I rose, amen, all of a sudden I had problems. See, when I was broke, wasn't nobody calling me for loans. And, wasn't no, and listen, and in my broke days, when you saw me coming, you, listen, you turned around and walked the other way. I had less friends in my broke days. But that whole time I was grinding, grinding, grinding. When I get here, when I get here, and I kept getting places and getting places and getting places. And guess what I figured out? I got a TV on every wall in the room in my house, amen. And, I, and, 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 and that doesn't satisfy me. I drive a nice car. My wife drives a nice car, and that doesn't satisfy me. Nothing can bring us joy but Jesus. Nothing can bring us joy but Jesus. Well, number four, number four, God expects, God expects you to give to support the advancement of the kingdom. That's what he says. I didn't make this up. It's, 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 it's in your Bible. It's, it's in 2 Corinthians 9, right? 6 to 11. He says the point is this. The person who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And the person who sows generously will also reap generously. That's the, that's the, that's the law of sowing and reaping. Right. You can't listen. You cannot you cannot be a farmer who doesn't put seed in the ground and expect a harvest. Hmm. Each person should give each person should do as he decided in his heart, not reluctantly out of compulsion, since God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to cause all grace to overflow to you or to abound in every good way, always having enough that you need that you may excel in every good work. Here's the last one, number five. God expects us to trust him and not our bank accounts. This is the hard one. This is the hard one. God expects us to trust him and not our bank accounts. Look at 1 Timothy 6, 17 through 19. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth. He's talking to us in this room. Because listen what he says. He says in this present world, right? Don't trust in your wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything we need for our enjoyment. Command them to do good. Here it is. To be rich in good deeds and to be generous and willing to share. In other words, when God moves on your heart, God says, don't keep going back and forth with me because the check he's asking you to write seems like it's too much. He says, because he says, because if he says, because if I can't get you that way, I'll just blow on what you got. Amen. Mm-hmm. Heaven has no coupons. There's no discount given in heaven. I can't I, I, I can't say when God asks me to give, do I get a military discount? Do I get a senior discount? Do I get a student discount? No. He says, I expect you to give generously because I've blessed you generously. Man, one person said amen with the preacher. Right. He says, in this way, verse 19, lay up treasures for yourselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that you may take hold of the life that is truly life. The late Charlie, the late Charlie Tremendous Jones was a well-known motivational speaker and author. He had received numerous awards, recognition in his lifetime. He had pictures with presidents and heads of states and football players and singers and Grammy Award winning artists. He he had all this stuff in his house on his his walls. Then his house burnt down to the ground. And while he was lamenting in the ashes of his loss, He said, the Lord seemed to say to him, it's okay, Charlie. I was going to burn it all up anyway. It's okay. God's going to burn it all up anyway. Jeremiah helps us as we close. 9, 23 and 24. He says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Nor let the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me, the Lord, that I am the Lord, exercising love and kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth. 
For in these things I delight, says the Lord. Serve God, whatever your state. Serve God on top of the mountain and in the valley low. Serve God. Wear this world lightly. You will have more joy. In fact, your joy will be complete. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you so much. We thank you, God, that uh, we can hold to many values and perspectives, but there is the kingdom perspective. God, we thank you, Lord Father, that we sit, God Father, blessed beyond what we ever imagined. God, you've given, you've given God so much to us. Yeah, Lord, beyond the cars, the cash, the cribs, the promotions, the businesses, the bonuses, the IRAs, the 401ks, God, you have given us something so much better in the person of Jesus Christ. Let Jesus be our greatest treasure, we pray. If you're listening and you don't know him, I want you to exchange temporal things for eternal things. This earth, this earth as we know it, this world as we know it, is fading away. The Bible says the grass wither, the flower will fade. But the word of the Lord remains that his kingdom will go on forever and ever. And those who trust in him become part of a kingdom that has no end. God, help us to be kingdom-minded people and to put you first. Break us, God that we can get and give all of our lives to you. God, Father, if we happen to be here this morning, and God, we are the person of that first perspective, God, we, 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 we are struggling through financially, God, Father. Lord, Father, let that be, God, a place of testimony of your goodness. God, that in the midst of my lack, God, Father, you provide. And if we're all the way on the other end, God, where we have more than enough, God, let that be a testimony that God has given abundantly. But whatever it is, God, let us turn back to you. Because you alone are God. We thank you and praise you this morning. In Jesus' name. And the church said amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise on this morning. Thank <clears throat> you.